Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. I'm really excited to bring you a very cool fish, a species profile on the Priscilla slash X-Ray Tetra. What I think is so cool about this is you're going to love this tank. It was from Aquashella. It was from the Aquarium Gallery booth. It was my favorite setup of that Aquashella. Hope you enjoy the video. Appreciate you being here. This is the Priscilla Tetra, otherwise known as the X-Ray Tetra, and I wanted to show you this fish in this amazing setup. This actually came from Aquashella last year. It was my favorite aquascape of the entire show. It was absolutely amazing. I thought, what a better way to show this cool fish than looking at this aquascape as well. The Priscilla or X-Ray Tetra is from South America. It's found in various river systems where the water there is usually going to be on the softer side, more acidic. Although, as we're going to see, most of these fish are now commercially bred, so the water parameters are going to be a little bit wider in terms of their range. The males and females both get to be around the same size. They're gonna be somewhere close to an inch and a half to two inches, so this is not a large tetra. The females are gonna be a little bit more rounded, but both of them have some color, as you can see on the dorsal fin. By the way, if you're looking for these fish, can't find them locally, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. I'll have their information down in the description below. They are a channel sponsor. They carry these fish and they look absolutely awesome. Now these fish are on the peaceful side, so that's something you have to consider when you're getting ready to set up your tank. Generally speaking, if there's going to be any aggression, it's going to be towards one another, and usually it's not very dramatic. They usually just like to chase each other around a little bit, but usually not any fin nipping. This is a great pe peaceful fish for that community tank. expect them to live around four years or so. Now, when it comes to tank mates, you've got some options here. Again, this is a peaceful fish, so that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. It's best to keep these fish in a big group, just like you're seeing throughout the video. A minimum of six, but you'd be better off with eight, 10, or 12, and that's going to have an impact on tank size, which we're going to talk about in a few moments. So keep them in a group. That's the most important thing. Now, when you're thinking about other fish, we're going to have lots of species profiles down in the description below if you want more information on some of the fish you can keep with your X-Ray Tetra. But some good ideas if you're looking for a centerpiece fish, maybe a honey grammy or a dwarf grammy. You've got cichlids, smaller cichlids like a pistogramma and rams and crebenzis. Those would all be really cool, colorful options. Other types of tetras that are on the smaller, less aggressive side, a lot of your neons, your green neons, black neon standards, or your cardinal tetras would all work. Ember tetras would be a great option. Cherry barbs would be pretty cool. If you're looking for that cleanup or scavenger crew, your quarry cats would be a great option, as would be your pygmy quarries, otocinclus, bristlenose plecos, mystery snails. If you're looking for a little bit more action around the tank that's not a tetra, consider some of your live bears like your guppies, your platies, or your mollies. All of those would be great options. Like I said, in the description below, we're going to have a lot more information about fish you can keep with your x-ray tetra. Now, when it comes to water parameters, again, they're pretty easy to care for. Temperature is somewhere around 74 to 80, 80 degrees, so really your typical tropical fish water temperatures. pH somewhere between 6 and 8. They're going to really thrive the closer you can get to neutral, right around a pH of 7. Water hardness somewhere around 4 to 12 degrees on your GH and KH. Again, if you can keep that in the mid single digits, that's going to be more ideal. Water quality, we, this is not a fish that's going to do well if you have an ammonia spike or a nitrite spike or you're keeping your nitrates high. If you really want to keep these fish healthy, make sure you have a cycle tank. If you don't know what that means, check out the video in the upper right hand corner. We'll provide a lot more information about that. Feeding these fish is also relatively easy to do. We feed North Fin foods exclusively in our fish room, and they will eat North Fin flake foods. If the, if the flakes are really large, just crush them up a little bit so that they can eat the food a little bit more easily. They do like the community micro pellets from North Fin as well. Now, the tank size, I mentioned this earlier. 
If you go on the internet, you're gonna see most internet sources will tell you a 10 gallon is the minimum size, and I think that is the minimum size, but if you really wanna keep these fish thriving in a larger group, a 10 gallon long term might be a little bit small. Again, you can do it with a group of six or so, but if you want a larger group, a 20 gallon is probably gonna be a better option for you. You're going to be decorating the tank it pretty much needs to look exactly like what you're seeing here okay that's not true this is a very very nicely aquascape tank what we're looking for with the x-ray tetra is swimming space and that's one of the things that you see here you can add rocks and you can add driftwood and you can add plants real or fake or some type of plastic cave it really doesn't matter but they do have to have some open swimming space substrate it can be sand or gravel to make that determination Take a look at the other fish that you're keeping and if they prefer sand then keep them on sand but at least for these fish it isn't going to matter they don't really interact with the substrate a lot of times fish will change colors depending on whether or not the substrate is on the darker side or the lighter side these fish don't do that as much so pick the substrate color that best suits your needs When it comes to breeding these fish, it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. They do readily breed in the community aquarium. You need obviously males and females. Feed them well, get them closer to, to their ideal temperatures, ideal water parameters. So somewhere in the upper 70s, pH around six and a half to seven. And again, your water hardness should be four, five, six degrees. Now they are egg scatterers, which means these fish are going to lay hundreds of eggs and they're gonna basically go throughout all the tank they're going to get caught up in plants a lot of people when they're breeding these fish on purpose will use spawning mops they will remove the spawning mop put that in a, a cycled 10 gallon tank let the eggs hatch usually takes anywhere from one to three days depending on water temperature the real challenge isn't so much getting the eggs to hatch it's what you do with the fry after the eggs hatch the fry are usually going to go through their egg sack in about a couple of days and then you're going to have to start feeding them very 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 tiny food because the fry are going to be absolutely minuscule and so usually the fry food or powdered rapashi infusoria is what you're going to be feeding these fish at first to get them to grow up These are absolutely fantastic fish, as you can see throughout this video. Peaceful, they love to school. They offer a nice silver color along with that dorsal fin that's got the yellow and the black and that tail fin with the red, so it's got some nice color. Highly recommend, if you get a chance to keep these fish, definitely do it. Once again, if you're looking for tank mates, check out the description below, as well as flipaquatics.com. They have these fish, they're healthy, they're happy. Really appreciate you being here, and we'll see you in the next one.